Okay, once again, uh, it's really nice to see all of you um, online. The last two uh, physical sessions in Singapore was uh, really uh, very, very uh, rewarding. Unfortunately, we can't meet uh, in person. Uh, the deng dengue situation um, in Singapore, I think we are quite unique. Um, earlier on, uh, Dr. Samira showed um, countries in Eastern uh, Mediterranean, many countries have three or more uh, vector-borne diseases to tackle at one time. So perhaps I consider myself, uh, ourselves a little bit more fortunate. Dengue is by far uh, our main uh, concern. Of course, um, we have a small team uh, conducting malaria uh, surveillance, but dengue consumes uh, almost all our, our focus in vector-borne disease uh, control. So my, my sharing today will be highly uh, contextualized to Singapore being uh, very much a very urbanized and dense city, uh, about the size of Bahrain, slightly smaller, smaller than Hong Kong. And London is 2.2 times larger than Singapore. So, <laughs> so it's highly contextualized. And uh, please uh, bear with me uh, if some of the points that I bring up are not really relevant. Uh, in your context. The dengue uh, control uh, framework or strategy in Singapore um, is aligned and adopted uh, from the IVM uh, promoted by WHO. And these five elements are very well conceived, uh, all very important. Uh, but I must say uh, not all five elements are uh, as well or equally developed uh, in Singapore. And following the outbreak uh, last year uh, in 2020, uh, we think there are several areas that we can continue to strengthen. Can I have the next slide, please, uh, Catherine? I will now go uh, and talk a little bit about how uh, we are organized uh, to combat uh, dengue. Uh, the next slide, please. Uh, the One Health uh, approach in a One Health approach, NEA, uh, we work with uh, Mini Ministry of Health uh, to tackle the disease. Dengue cases uh, notified to MOH uh, by doctors and clinics. And these cases are then sent to NEA, uh, my department, on a daily basis. And what uh, my team would do is to plot these cases and then package the information to send it out to the operation teams as well as to publish on the internet. And there will be a slide later on to just say a little bit more about how, how that process work. Uh, EHI also work uh, with uh, MOH. I'm so sorry, uh, Catherine. Uh, the previous slide, just to finish it, on uh, virus surveillance as well as uh, also the vector surveillance. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Within uh, the public health uh, pillar in NEA, uh, there are several uh, divisions and uh, two major uh, groups, my group and EHI. Public health is one of the uh, four operational arms in NEA. Um, the other arms being environmental protection, uh, meteorological services, and hawker center. Uh, if you ever come to Singapore, please visit our hawker centers in Singapore. Uh, all these uh, divisions under the Director General of Public Health, except for Memorial Facility Planning with Divisions, uh, they all have a role to play in uh, dengue control. And we also have partner divisions in NEA, uh, in our dengue control strategy, uh, corporate communications, and 3P network, and 3P, uh, these are the outreach uh, people. Within uh, my group, uh, I have three regional offices, uh, which I'll talk a, a little bit about later, and uh, three... Uh, <laughs> Do 
please go on, Mr. Tony. Yeah, I think. Uh, Tony, I think you're muted. Please. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, Thank you. In the green box, you see Vector Control Operations uh, Division. Uh, they are in the headquarters, and, and this is division is in charge of the Dengue program. Of course, uh, also Red, Red Control takes up some of their uh, bandwidth. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, this is uh, the island of Singapore, uh, 728 square kilometers. Uh, it will get a bit larger as we reclaim more land <laughs> on the western end for uh, the port. Uh, it's a very small country, highly uh, urbanized and built up. Well, the, the three regional offices uh, boundaries are aligned to the what we call community development councils. Okay, so uh, this allow us to have a better um, collaboration with the communities as well as the town councils that manages the public housing estates. Okay, public housing uh, made up uh, 80% or rather 80% of Singaporeans uh, live in public housing. All right, so each of these uh, regional office is headed by a director and they're also in charge of some unique functions uh, for Western uh, enforcement for smoking and littering. And for Central, uh, they have a port health section to make sure that ships coming in do not bring in diseases and they have a dedicated rat control section and for eastern uh, they have a section looking after malaria surveillance so the regional office uh, are mainly responsible for vector control and sanitation the uh, intelligence and surveillance uh, for dengue control uh, is a centralized function in hq next slide please Oh, now i uh, talk a little bit about uh, the local determinants of uh, dengue in Singapore. Uh, next slide. Okay, uh, you see on the picture on the top left, uh, those blocks closest to us, the red color and blue. Okay, these are public housing and 80% of Singaporeans live in public housing. There are about 10,000 uh, blocks increasing by the year. Uh, as we continue to build uh, public housing to meet the needs of the uh, population. Uh, the one on the top right, uh, these are private apartments, uh, we call it condominiums, and at the bottom, uh, landed properties or landed houses. Uh, Sing Singapore uh, is uh, warm and humid uh, year round, so the threat of dengue outbreak, um, well, for most part is from May to October, but we have seen sometimes uh, in November a slight uh, increase as well. Okay, and uh, the different types of housing also, uh, you know, uh, pose different challenges or risk to uh, mosquito breeding. And for houses that have compound like the landed houses, uh, we tend to find more breeding per hundred houses uh, or per hundred inspections than let's say a small apartment. Uh, as you see in the top. Uh, urbanization has also spread um, to the northern and western part of Singapore in the last um, maybe three, four decades. And we continue to build uh, public housing now more to the west and up in the north. So I, I think um, we are seeing also um, the spread of the vector uh, Egypti and also a uh, spread of dengue over the past uh, decades. The next slide, please. Catherine, uh, can, can you help me, please? Thank you. Um, in the 1960s, um, the Singapore government recognized that dengue was an uh, increasing threat and formed a dedicated uh, control unit and was under uh, the Ministry of Health. In the early 1970s, the function of vector control was handed over to the Ministry of the Environment or Environment Ministry, which today is called Ministry of Sustainability and Environment. Um, the red line shows uh, dengue cases um, per 100,000 people in Singapore, and it has really shown an, a huge increase uh, since, um, I would say, uh, 2005. 
And earlier, a brief by Dr. Rahman has also shown a similar trend uh, worldwide. Um, what we think is uh, increased urbanization and maybe partly increased through the um, better diagnostic and even health seeking uh, behavior in Singapore. However, the blue line uh, shows that the, the breeding index or the percentage of breeding found in home inspections and other premises, uh, they have uh, continued to, to come down, um, but still not good enough uh, for apartments. Um, range from one to 3% uh, of inspections that have uh, mosquito breeding detected. And for houses with open uh, compound, it's three to 5%. And so I think we can do a bit better to get um, residents um, do their part. Okay, so it's, it's never ending, this uh, continuing need to educate and get the residents to do their part. Next slide, please. Uh, 2005 was our first uh, recorded outbreak, the like in uh, purple. Okay, and in hindsight, it looks small. <laughs> the largest was in year 2020, the red line, where the weekly cases uh, topped 1,792 in July, uh, when we also combating uh, COVID. What's interesting here is um, the circuit breaker or lockdown in some countries, they call them lockdown, uh, started here in Singapore in week 15, uh, early part of April, 7 April. And a month later, we saw dengue cases uh, surge uh, rapidly. We think that um, that circuit breaker, which uh, lasted for two months, where most of the construction uh, sites were left uh, uh, you know, vacant with a small team to look after, would have somewhat uh, compounded the risk of dengue outbreaks. And we also think that with more people working from home and the Egypt being a home dweller would have also uh, compounded the risk. Okay, so 2020, um, we we recorded more than 35,000 dengue cases, the highest so far. Next slide, please. Uh, serotype surveillance. Um, later, I think Dr. Joel Egg will talk a little bit more about how serotype surveillance can provide some early warning of uh, outbreak on a year-to-year -year basis. But at the operational level, um, we identify um, localized transmission, we call them clusters of dengue cases, uh, where the serotype uh, is of the less common uh, serotype three or four, and we, where we can, we'll put more attention to curbing the spread of that two serotype. Uh, dengue one and two, uh, we had exposure to them more in the past, and we think that the population has a higher immunity, albeit still very low. I think the zero prevalence for Singapore uh, shows that it's still uh, very, very low. Okay, next slide, please. For vector surveillance, uh, in 2016, uh, we started to deploy uh, gravity traps in our public housing estates, uh, 10,000 blocks. Uh, by 2017, uh, we, we thought the data had been good enough for us to uh, plot them. So the last three years, uh, you can see in the blue line, there's sort of a seasonal uh, trending in the mosquito population has monitored by the gravity traps. And we used um, the data to communicate the risk to the public uh, by highlighting the high mosquito population and therefore telling the public you should really uh, be more vigilant. As to how um, the mosquito population correlate with dengue cases, at the very localized um, level with you know, 10 to 15 housing blocks, um, EHI has done uh, some studies that show that if the mosquito population me measured by the GRI 
is higher, the odds of there being a dengue transmission is, is also higher. Um, so perhaps if later um, you have a chance to, to talk to EHI, you can ask them more about those findings. But how in operations we use the gravity trap data is not using the blue line. Uh, we will disseminate uh, small sectors, geographical sectors where the gravity trap findings are high to the town council who is in charge of the area and we will tell them they should take uh, certain proactive measures to remove uh, mosquito breeding habitats. All right, so the whole island of Singapore, we have about public housing area, more than 800 such sectors where the data is being shared. Next slide, please. Okay, um, in the next section, I will talk a little bit about our operations. Next slide, please. Uh, the framework is quite similar to what Dr. Samira uh, showed earlier, the four pillars, and we have uh, two foundation as well. Um, also, you can see the elements of the IVM in the pillars and the foundation. Okay, so I, I won't cover uh, uh, these four pillars and the two foundation, um, but you can take a look at them uh, later on. So our aim is really to keep uh, mosquito population low and with the GAI uh, data from the gravity trap, it help us track our operations. And when there's a, a dengue uh, transmission area, notified, we'll move in there to curb the transmission and, and close the dengue cluster, we call it here, close the cluster. Next slide, please. Um, sustainable prevention and control uh, when there's no outbreak, uh, we do preventive uh, inspections based on risk. And with the GAI, um, it help us uh, prioritize our manpower resources to the areas with higher mosquito population. And we also have uh, another risk-based approach for premises like construction sites that historically our data shows they are more prone to breeding. You know, construction site breeding index can be from 8% up to 15%. So they deserve uh, more attention. And their, their penalty regime for construction sites are also a lot stiffer than for for household. Okay, later you hear about our stakeholders and we get them to uh, do a source reduction exercise before the peak dengue season in, in April and May. And we also rolled out a national dengue prevention campaign every year in about uh, March or April, depending on what our forecast for the outbreak is for the year. And the public in, in Singapore, uh, they have many channels to give uh, feedback a mosquito nuisance or potential mosquito uh, breeding habitats and our officers will respond to inspect uh, the premises. So all this help to uh, keep mosquito population low. Next slide, please. Earlier, I spoke about how we share our um, GAI data with our main stakeholder, the town council. So these are the measures we will tell them to do and the, the QR code there, you can scan it. Uh, it will take you to our NEA uh, website and you can see for yourself, there's a map there. Uh, we have colored, uh, colored areas showing high mosquito population and also colored area, areas showing where dengue transmission is taking place. Next slide, please. Next, uh, okay. So it's quite interesting to see uh, how the, uh, public uh, feedback, you know, trend with the actual dengue cases. So on top, uh, the red line, you see mosquito nuisance, whether it's a day, day or night biter, they will complain to NEA and we'll, we'll inspect the premises and surroundings. And the uh, red line at the bottom uh, shows a potential breeding. Um, the Singapore public, I think they are well, at, well informed to look out for uh, potential breeding habitats. And the tagline is um, uh, a small amount of water equivalent to our 20 cent coin, not very big, uh, could breed mosquitoes. So we do get public calling us to say, oh, they've seen stagnant water here and there, and they're concerned about breeding. Uh, so the bottom uh, red 
a curve. You can also see that round about week 15 when the lockdown uh, started in Singapore, construction sites uh, were left pretty much uh, vacant and empty. Public uh, feedback uh, on mosquito uh, breeding habitats uh, spike. Okay, so I think the Singapore uh, public is very well aware of the dengue risk. Um, but as to how much they do to keep their homes uh, free from mosquito and protect themselves from mosquito bite is something that we have to continue to work on because there are so many other competing uh, messages. You know, in COVID, we tell them to, to clean their hands, uh, to wear their mask, and, and so many other things we have to remind them. So it is a challenge um, to get the messages, messages through and make sure they act on it. And I think one, one of the more sustainable way is to continue to get uh, the communities, and here we call them grassroots leaders, to be involved and they can see the outcome and they're supported with information like mosquito breeding, uh, mosquito population. And from there, they can better engage their residents and also see that they take action. Okay, I think prevention is certainly better than, than cure. Okay, so on the right, you just uh, it's an information uh, system that we have to plot out our data and hopefully, hopefully that will allow the operations team to better make an assessment of the situation. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, I had briefly uh, spoken about how MOH passed the information to NEA, all the boxes in green, uh, functions of NEA. And we do engage um, the communities, engage the media and the town councils. Next slide, please. Okay, so every day uh, we, we have a team to uh, put all the dengue cases together and we'll publish them uh, for the public uh, to view, both on the website, NEA website, as well as our uh, app. You can set your home address and your mother's home address as well. Uh, and you get notified when there's high mosquito population or when there's dengue transmission in those preset uh, addresses. So we hope more people will sign up uh, to the app and set those alerts. Next slide, please. When we are notified of a dengue cluster, a localized transmission, uh, the operations team will swing into action. Source reduction is the key uh, focus of our operations. So home inspections are uh, crit critical. And so is uh, inspecting the common areas and other premises around, around that. Uh, dengue transmission area. Okay, we also alert the residents and also mobilize our volunteers to do outreach. And, you know, uh, given an outbreak year like 2020, where we had 300 localized transmission at any one time, there's not enough manpower to go around. Uh, we, we have to prioritize. And our past studies by EHI uh, showed that the clusters that were formed with three cases in 28 days uh, tend to grow into larger cluster. They have a odds, higher odds. So where we can, we put some focus on, on these sort of clusters. But where we can't, then it will be how fast the cluster is growing by the number of cases per day that's coming in that we try to prioritize our resources uh, that way. Next slide, please. Okay, our manpower, uh, they are augmented by contractors. And on an outbreak year, we get funding to hire uh, temporary uh, staff. At the headquarters, we have a weekly meetings chaired by our chief executive and updates to the ministers uh, regularly. And for public comms, um, besides the website um, and news releases, we also put up uh, banners, the picture on the top right. So you can see a, a red color a big circle, it shows that this is a cluster larger than 10 cases. All right, and the public, when they see that, they, they should try to uh, take some preventive actions at home. Next slide, please. Okay, um, well, source reduction is really our main uh, method for uh, dengue control. And when, when there's a localized uh, transmission, we do employ uh, chemical and, and non-chemical 
control means. As Dr. Rahman uh, said, outdoor thermal fogging um, effectiveness uh, is not, um, not proven to be high, but uh, we do uh, conduct them uh, selectively and mobilize uh, many guns, thermal guns, so that we can create a sufficient uh, density and engulf uh, transmission area. So for the Zika outbreak, uh, we certainly uh, did that because we wanted to do everything to control the spread of Zika. And that was in 2016. Right. But in, in a highly urbanized uh, a city like ours with many tall buildings, uh, this is certainly challenging uh, to create an effective uh, fog. Next slide, please. Tony, you have five minutes of your, talk, of your time left, please. Oh, thank you, Dr. Ali. Okay, um, that's so right. this... Because, you know, more minutes, but, uh, that's, the, that's the timeline. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, so this self-explanatory. Uh, uh, next slide, please. Okay, legislations um, are very important to help uh, operations and we use legislations to penalize uh, homeowners and contractors and premises operators or occupiers when we find mosquito breeding. So last year, uh, we inspected um, about 950,000. Uh, we make 950,000 inspections the year before, about 900,000. And, and we took more than 10,000 enforcement actions. So these are summons. And for repeated cases, we'll send the people to the offenders to court. Uh, and the summons will be higher, the fines will be higher in court. And in uh, situations where we need to, we can issue a stop work order to construction sites. Normally, uh, this uh, legislation is a lecture by itself. So today I'll just show you one slide. Okay, and the last part, uh, intersectorial collaboration. Next slide, please. Next one. Okay, uh, these are what the 3P uh, mean uh, in Singapore. And you can take a look for yourself. Uh, next one, please. The, the public uh, outreach is a critical component uh, for us. And we get the grassroots advisors. Uh, some of them are actually political appointment holders too, to lead uh, this outreach. We also advertise uh, dengue uh, messages on the social media and traditional uh, means. Next slide. Our partners um, in the task force uh, comes from these uh, three sectors and the bullets below show how we use this forum to help uh, combat dengue as one country. Next slide, just quickly, uh, some examples of how our collaboration with uh, other sectoral leads uh, to change the design uh, to remove uh, potential mosquito breeding habitats. Next slide, please. Yep, that works as well. Change the design. Next one. And finally, uh, my concluding slide. Next one, please. Okay, I, I think. Um, for Singapore, um, having learned from uh, some of the lessons uh, in 2020, uh, some of these uh, elements of the IVM, uh, we, we really have to continue to work on it. Uh, there will never be enough uh, offices to check all the houses and it is Egypti being well adapted to the urban environment. I think moving forward, uh, we need communities and residents to really uh, do their part and for that, we also got to help them, uh, give them some information, some data, so they can be motivated as well and guided to do the necessary uh, vector control prevention. Okay, thank you very much, everyone.